Hello and welcome. So, what does it take to reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube? Well, I'm happy to say I finally reached that goal. Uh, so, before I continue, I want to thank all viewers and subscribers, everybody who supported the channel to reach 1,000 subscribers. Uh, so, thank you all. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, now, more details. Uh, this is a chess channel, so you're probably, uh, you know, those of you who just clicked on this video to see how long it takes to reach 1,000 subscribers or were curious, uh, I will play one of the uh, greatest chess games out there. Uh, and if you're new to chess or don't know anything about chess, uh, you might still find this a little interesting. Uh, for those who have seen this game before, um, it's such a great game that, uh, you know, it's worth looking at again. All right. So, uh, this game took place at a Paris Opera House in 1858. And one of the greatest chess players in history, Paul Morphy, uh, he played this game against a duke and a count, uh, the Duke of Brunswick and Count Isward. So, uh, let's take a look at this game. Uh, it began with uh, e4 and then e5, so common moves in chess. Uh, and as I play this game, I'll talk about reaching 1,000 subscribers. Pretty awesome. Uh, so if you're thinking about starting your own chess channel, uh, you might wonder, well, how long does it take to reach 1,000 subscribers? Uh, and maybe I'll do another video in the future that'll cover this topic some more. Uh, but for me, it took, uh, let's see, about 13 and a half months to reach 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now, you could probably do that faster uh, or it could take longer. It really depends on what your channel's about, how big of an audience there is out there. I just picked chess because I've always enjoyed chess. Uh, since I was a young child, I learned around four years old from my grandfather and my uncle how to play chess. Uh, and then I played a little bit against my dad. Uh, but I never got serious about chess until I was in my 20s and started reading books and things. Uh, and, you know, if you're new to chess, you could watch a movie called Searching for Bobby Fischer or The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. They're both uh, really good. All right, so continuing with this game real quick, we have these two pawns moving in the center. Uh, then Morphe develops the knight attacking and his opponent defends. All right, so uh, a thousand subscribers on YouTube um, took 13 and a half months. Uh, now, you can either decide to do long videos or short videos. And I did some research and apparently you don't want to mix those up uh, because then your shorts viewers might not watch your long videos and vice versa and it, it could hurt your channel in some ways, possibly. Um, I mean, you could experiment and mix the two and see what happens. Uh, so maybe in the future, I'll do a separate shorts channel uh, because my videos, they may be too long. You've already noticed uh, sometimes I get on the habit of talking and I might talk a little bit too much. So yes, 13 and a half months. Uh, in that time, I made 500, about 580 videos. Uh, now, I learned at first, I just started blasting out a bunch of videos, sometimes up to five or six videos in a day. Now, they were shorter back then. Uh, and then I kind of settled down into a one video a day pace. Now, uh, for you, if you're trying to start a YouTube channel, you might only want to do one video a week or two videos a week. Uh, but, you know, probably at least one video a week is a good way to start. Uh, so, yeah, it took, let's see, uh, well, to get monetized, you have to hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in a, in a one-year period. Uh, so, I went past the 4,000 watch hours, uh, you know, months ago. So, I'm up to, like, 5,000, almost 600 watch hours. And 
that is because my videos are a little bit longer because I'm kind of teaching chess in the videos or playing. Uh, so let's continue with this game here um, as I'm speaking. So this move is played, putting more pressure on this pawn along with the knight. And so the opponent attacks this knight and pins it to this more valuable queen. Uh, so then the pawn is taken here and the opponent captures this knight, which was protecting this pawn. Uh, so the queen captures and now this pawn is taken. And this keeps material even, but Morphe has this queen developed aiming here at this weak f7 pawn, which is only protected by the king. Uh, and if you're new to chess, your goal is to, uh, you know, capture this, not capture the king, but checkmate the king, attack it where it cannot escape. All right, so these pieces are lining up and Morphe is threatening to win the game immediately by capturing this pawn with the queen and the game would be over then. So Morphe's opponents, they play this knight move to block the queen's attack, but the queen just shifts over here to b3 and now the queen is attacking this pawn and this pawn uh, with the queen and bishop together. So the queen guards this pawn, uh, you know, maybe getting ready to let this one go. Um, but there's also a trick here. If uh, this pawn is taken and the king has to move and the queen captures here, there's a possibility of a check attacking the king and attacking the queen at the same time. Uh, but that doesn't happen in the game. So let's get down to what actually does happen. Morphe is famous for just developing his pieces quickly uh, and generating an attack, even if it means sacrificing pieces. And that's what makes this game exciting. So we have the knight developing, and then this pawn pushes forward to prevent the knight from moving forward. And Morphe develops another piece, pinning this knight to the more valuable queen. And now an attack by the opponents of Morphe. B5 is played, attacking the bishop. All right, so while we think here what Morphe should do with this piece under attack, uh, let me talk more about reaching 1,000 subscribers. So, so, aw so awesome. Uh, now, you can get monetized on YouTube uh, for 500 subscribers and 3,000 watch hours. Uh, in a one year period. So I was monetized, oh, you know, probably uh, months ago. And um, heck, maybe four or five months ago. And I'll, I'll do future videos and get more into that with uh, maybe more details about this, you know, journey on YouTube. Uh, but to make this video a little quicker and speed it up here, uh, uh, months ago, I reached the monetization for the channel with 500 subscribers and 3,000 watch hours, but that only allows donations uh, on your uh, YouTube channel, uh, Super Thanks, I believe it's called, which, uh, you know, I only had a small number of subscribers, and I didn't push any Super Thanks uh, trying to get people to donate. Uh, but, you know, if you decide to ever donate, I would thank you because I'm trying to, you know, generate any money I can and hopefully improve this channel. There's still a lot of room for improvement. And that's another thing. Anything that you see that you think I should improve on, feel free to tell me. I won't be offended by anything. Uh, you can say absolutely anything and I don't get offended. Uh, so, you know, if it's good that's fine if it's bad you know that's fine too i won't be offended in any way so feel free to uh roast my channel and uh say anything you feel uh that you know is a piece of advice that may help me all right so my goal was to hit 1000 subscribers and the 4000 watch hours uh, so 13 and a half months, 580 videos, which that was a little overboard. Uh, I actually got burnt out a little bit doing too much, too many videos all at once. 
uh, and putting out too much content. And so I kind of pulled back and settled into a one video a day routine. So I try to put out one video a day uh, and that kind of helps you from keeping, uh, from getting burnt out by just doing too much YouTube all the time. Uh, you know, even if you have to go down to a video every other day or only two videos a week or even one video a week, sometimes you have to back off a little bit uh, so you don't get too burnt out. Uh, but helping find a subject that you like here, uh, like chess, it makes it a little bit easier to uh, put videos out and not get burnt out so much. So uh, a little bit more with the game. This bishop is under attack. What should Morphy do against the Count and the Duke here in this Paris Opera House in 1858? So uh, Morphy decides to capture this pawn, giving up a more valuable knight, which is worth the equivalent of three pawns. He gives it up for this pawn. Of course, the opponents of Morphy capture and then he recaptures with the bishop, uh, getting two pawns for his knight, which is worth three. And he also has an attack on the king. So when the king is under attack with check, there's three options. Uh, capture the attacker, which he can't do. Block, uh, which is what Morphe's opponents do here, uh, or run. But he decides instead to block, which develops a knight off the back rank, getting it a little closer to the action, uh, and it blocks this attack. So Morphy, uh, he continues by castling his king to the queen side, getting his king out of the middle of the board, uh, closer to the, the side here where it's a little bit protected by his pawns, and even more importantly, this brings the rook to the center of the board, attacking an open file and adding pressure to this knight, which is under attack by the bishop. So Morphy's opponent just adds this rook to the protection of the knight, and you know it also brings the rook into the center where it's doing more instead of sitting in the corner. And Morphy, famous for his attacks and sacrifices, gives up this more valuable rook uh, which is worth the equivalent of five pawns. He gives it up for a knight that's only worth three pawns. So we have a recapture, but now this rook is pinned to the king by this bishop. And so Morphy adds more pressure. So we see that Morphy is using all his pieces, uh, not the pawns. If you're new to chess, usually when people talk about pieces, they refer to the queen, uh, the bishops, the knights, the rooks, uh, and not so much the pawns. Uh, now, we have an attack here building up. We see that Morphy is using all his pieces, the queen, bishops, and rook. And even though his opponent has more pieces, his rook and his bishop are just sitting there in the corner not doing much. And these other two are pinned by the bishops. If they move, well, this one cannot move or the king would be under attack and that would be an illegal move. And then we have this bishop trapping the knight. If it moves, if that knight moves out of the way, the more uh, valuable queen worth nine pawns will be captured. So the game continues with the queen getting out of the way of this pin, but that leads to a beautiful finish to this game with capture of the rook by the bishop, forking the king and the queen. So the knight that's no longer pinned to the queen recaptures, and now we have an amazing sacrifice. Morphy gives up his most valuable piece uh, other than the king. You know, if the king is lost, you lose, of course, or if the king is trapped, I should say, checkmated, you lose. But out of the pieces, the queen is worth nine pawns and it's sacrificed, captured by this knight. But that opens the way for the end of the game, the checkmate with rook to d8. And as I said, 
when you're under check, there are three things that the king can do. Capture the attacker, which he cannot because this bishop is guarding the king and the king can never move onto a square that's under attack. The other option is to block, but because they're side by side, that's impossible, uh, or to run. And the king cannot do that because the bishop is covering this square. And of course, the rook is covering here. And we see how Morphy used all of his pieces and only has two left on the board versus his opponent's knight, bishop, rook, and queen. And these two pieces just never got into the game. So one of the most beautiful games in chess history. If you're a beginner to chess, you should definitely... Uh, learn this game, go over it and over it again uh, until it's burned into your memory. And, you know, even chess veterans will smile and enjoy uh, taking a look at this game. So, you know, if you've seen this game many times, um, you know, I just thought I'd show it again because, you know, it's just such a beautiful game. All right, back to... 1,000 subscribers on YouTube and we'll finish out this video. So yes, to get 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, uh, it took me about 13 and a half months. I made 580 videos around there uh, and you don't have to do that many. And of course, um, I'm not a computer wizard or anything. So uh, I had to settle with uh, just using a webcam, um, you know, and a microphone and just putting my picture down in the corner of the screen and moving chess pieces around to give lessons or to play games. Uh, so, you know, your videos could be very different from mine. Uh, I have a, a good friend uh, who has a Campbell Cabin YouTube chess channel, uh, which he probably got a little bit burned out. He started the channel and it was doing pretty good, you know, and he got up over a hundred and some subscribers, maybe 150. Uh, and then he got busy with life and that happens too. Uh, so, you know, you could check out his Campbell Cabin video, or sorry, YouTube channel. And, you know, maybe I'm trying to encourage him to get that channel started back up. So, you know, watch the 20 or 30 videos that he already put out. Uh, and they're about outdoors type stuff. Uh, you know, log splitting equipment, firewood, um, wood stoves, you know, just a lot of cool stuff that you would deal with at a cabin. So, you know, feel free to check that out if it might be interesting to you. Uh, so, 1,000 subscribers, you know, pretty awesome. I'm excited. That'll keep me motivated to keep going with this channel. Uh, and then once you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours in a year period, you'll receive monetization, or excuse me, you'll receive um, money from advertising on YouTube. So you see all these ads popping up. So YouTube collects 100% of the ad revenue uh, on any ads that are on your videos until you get monetized at the 1,000 subscriber level and 4,000 watch hours. Only then do you receive 55% of ad revenue uh, and YouTube gets the other 45%. But in the meantime, you know, I may have had advertising on my videos for a year and YouTube has been collecting uh, all that advertising revenue. Now it might not be that much because I, uh, you know, the most views I've had on one video is like 3000, but my average views per video are like a hundred or less. Uh, but still, you know, that's some money that YouTube has been collecting a hundred percent of. So now, uh, that I hit this 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, I'll at least collect 55% of the ad revenue. And, you know, I'm guessing that that might not be too much, uh, probably $50 or less uh, per month to start with. 
Uh, I don't know because I haven't seen yet uh, how much money I'll be bringing in. So maybe I'll do another video in the future and talk about that, how much you actually uh, can make on YouTube. But I hope to uh, take all this money and you know put most of it back into this channel uh, and help improve it. So once again, any comments, uh, don't feel uh, bad if you think you're going to offend me. I will not be offended by anything. You could even insult me and stuff like that doesn't bother me. So no matter how bad, uh, feel free to let loose and uh, say anything you have on your mind. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah, there it is, 13 and a half months. Um, I finally hit 1,000 subscribers after 580 videos, you know, but now I'm down to about one video a day. So, you know, probably in the next year, I'll only do about, you know, 300 and some videos. So, uh, is there anything else that I had, you know, that may help you out there? Anybody who's trying to start your own channel, I would say get started. Uh, you don't have to have perfect videos, you know, to start out. Your videos are not going to be perfect. I'm still always trying to improve, um, you know, so hopefully when I have some revenue coming in, I can get maybe a better camera, a uh, better microphone, and, you know, start learning how to improve, uh, you know, just the look of the channel, uh, maybe some editing software that's something i haven't gotten into uh because you know i'm not a computer wizard i haven't taken the plunge i guess yet to jump into sophisticated editing which you know would definitely help this channel so at some point you know i will probably have to do that dive in uh figure out how to do editing or if I start generating enough revenue in the future, perhaps I could pay somebody that's good with editing to uh, soup up, you know, or spice up the channel a little bit and uh, just add some more uh, editing with, you know, pictures or, you know, funny captions or something to spice the channel up a little bit. Okay, well, I've already, as you uh, have seen, probably... I talked too much, uh, went a little bit too long, uh, but I guess that's in my nature. So once again, I want to thank all viewers and subscribers for supporting this channel. You know, tell your friends, hit like, subscribe, uh, leave comments. Every little thing helps promote the channel. Uh, you know, watch some chess videos. If you're new to chess, learn to play chess. Uh, it's supposed to... Uh, you know, supposedly it helps, you know, or may help. Maybe the science is not exactly a hundred percent sure, but it may help with uh, dementia and Alzheimer's, preventing the onset or delaying at least, hopefully, uh, because working your brain by playing chess, uh, you know, it can really keep your brain a little sharper uh, and exercise your brain. So as we get older, you know, we could all use that. All right, final recap. 1,000 subscribers in 13 and a half months after 580 videos. Um, let's see, about 5,600 watch hours. And anything else on the numbers here? Um, oh, views. I had about 71,000 views in that uh, time frame. Uh, so what's that? About... Uh, a little over 5,000 views a month. So there you have it, reaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. And if you're about to start your journey, I would like to convince you to uh, just dive right in. You don't have to be perfect, just get started. Um, you know, start your own YouTube channel. Some people might think, oh, is it overcrowded? Uh, well, yeah, some areas might be crowded, but there's a lot of people that start YouTube channels and I think it's a rate like 90% quit before they monetize their YouTube channel. So, you know, jump in and just do it like the old Nike slogans. All right, well, 
Uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're not a chess player, then you know it's a good time to start and learn. And you know, even if you think the game might look boring at first, um, you're more than likely to uh, enjoy it a lot more once you start learning chess and get into it a little bit. All right. Thank you for watching and have a super chess day.